Guys, welcome back to the Desert Road. Today, we have this super awesome 2023 Lincoln Aviator. We're gonna take it for a drive, give you the pros and cons. So follow us along, let's go. Guys, welcome back to the Desert Road. Today we have a car I've been waiting to review for a really, really long time. This is a 2023 Lincoln Aviator, finished in black. It comes with the upgraded 22 inch gloss black wheels. All the trim is blacked out on here. I got a chance to take this thing for close to a week on a family trip up to Northern Arizona. So this is definitely a family car to me and we'll review it from that angle. So we'll take you on a little drive and talk about all that it offers. Let's go. All right guys, we're gonna briefly talk about the exterior to me this is one of Lincoln's best designs. This Aviator looks absolutely killer, especially in all black. I think it's one of the best designs that comes out of any of the American factories. The proportions are just right between the front headlights, the rear tail lights, and the sloping roof that just accentuates this car, makes it look really bold, really a uh, 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 firm and solid presence when you see this. Uh, I, I think they absolutely knocked it out of the park. Also, we'll talk a little bit about the price. So uh, this is the reserve, so it's mid-tier of the Aviator. This one is fairly well optioned out. Uh, what it comes to for the for the 23 model year, you're looking to spend about 75 to 80K with almost all the options checked off. The one option that this car particularly does not have is the air suspension. I'd pay the extra money to get that in here. And actually what it does is it lowers the car upon entry and it does a fairly great job of uh, lowering the car and making it easier for you to get in and out of this because the car does sit fairly high uh, on this non-air suspension version. All right, let's talk a little bit about interior space. I like this whole layout in here. Um, it definitely feels different than uh, any of the German cars we've been reviewing on our channel. Everything is modern, very classy, has a great touch to it. All the touch points feel fantastic in here, from the steering wheel to this leather wrap dash right here, to the, uh, to the wood accents they have going through here. The heads up display in here is probably the nicest and crispest heads up display. It features the most information I've ever seen in a car. It even has the temperature. It's got the time. It's got the miles left to empty and the speed limit. It literally gives you the entire kitchen sink that you can see. Um, touch screen works fantastic. Some of the people complain that this doesn't have Lincoln's most up-to-date um, iOS. This is a Sync 3. Uh, apparently there is a Sync 4 that's a bit more modern. I've used this for a week. Everything works fast. It's crispy smooth. Um, I, I found no issues with this touch screen or anything I was trying to do on here. I've used Apple CarPlay. Uh, very easy to use. You do have to have it plugged in, uh, but it works very well. You can do it for navigation. You can do it for music. Just uh, um, everything comes up on screen here. Really just standard Apple CarPlay stuff. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Again, what I like about this interior is the physical buttons for, you got the volume, you got the ability to change stations, and all the AC controls here are all button activated, which is great. You can control all this while still keeping your head on the road without too much distraction. Also, everything is very intuitive. You have easy controls to be able to control all the rear vents. You can do the second row and the three row 
controls and fan speed actually separate on here, which works very, very well. Very, very easy access to absolutely all the functions on here. The sound system is marvelous in here. It's the top of line system. It's got about 28 speakers in here. The AC blows ice cold. You have the heated and cooled seats in here, even for the middle row passengers. This one even comes with the heated steering wheel. I mean, it's a Lincoln. You expect the luxury features to be above and beyond, but I'm just really very impressed of how much you actually get in this car and uh, how usable all, all of it is. This particular setup comes with the super amazing 30-way adjustable seats there's absolutely nothing like it uh, they feel tremendous there's so many adjustments you can adjust each cushion individually each leg individually you have the seat controls right here if you want the extended seat controls you press this button it pulls up a menu on here where you can adjust everything from the bolsters to the lumbar individually through like 10 different settings also the massaging function is absolutely fantastic on here there's so many settings it's the best massage function out of any car I've been at. Highly, highly recommended. That comes with the 30-way seats. It's part of the luxury seating package. It's definitely worth the 2,000 or so dollars upgrade on this car. The comfort in here is unlike any other car I've sat in and uh, these seats is among the best seats in the game. The space in here is absolutely fantastic. This car isn't too big. It's not too small. It's larger than some of the cars we've recently reviewed. This has about five inches on uh, the X5. So this gives you slightly extra room in the back. It gives you that option for uh, the third row, which you have in here. So you can have it up or down. With it folded down, the trunk becomes really, really spacious while still giving you a very comfortable and roomy second row in here. Also, the second row has configurations of either the bench seat, which this car has, or you can get captain's chairs. If you go the captain's chair route, you can have an extra console in between that, or you can opt to have that out when you when you spec the car to give you easier access to the third row. So it just, it really depends on how much you're gonna be using that third row. As far as some of the other space, you have a nice big center cubby here. The cup holders are great. On top of the cup holders, you get a couple extra uh, pockets to put your phone, your keys into. Just a really good use of that extra space. Um, it kind of has this floating uh, center dash here that gives you space to store stuff underneath. If you're on a road trip or so, I'm sure you can uh, tow away a couple little goodies, some snacks, maybe some gum gummy bears in there, whatever you like to munch on while you're driving. The steering wheel has all the controls you would want on here from, uh, from radar crews. You can control the volume, you can change the channel, all the standard stuff. The one quirk I must point out that's an oddly placed button is this voice control button. It's actually right here on top of the steering wheel where your thumb would normally rest. And I've even hit it a couple times by accident. I don't know why Lincoln needed to do that. They could have found plenty of other space on the steering wheel to incorporate that button. I would rather have it somewhere else. My only gripe with this interior is the fact that with the black leather interior, Lincoln decided to put the light headliner in here. I don't know, maybe it's to like lighten up the way this is for a car, but I would still prefer the dark headliner with the black interior, one of my biggest gripes. The second biggest gripe, which is actually a small gripe, is it doesn't have the oh shit handle right here for me to grab. Um, all the other seats in this car have it, just, uh, you know, I don't know why, why Lincoln decided not to give that to you right here. It would be a, a, a cool little touch. Now, okay, we're gonna move on to the question everybody's been waiting for is how does this car drive, all right? What do we have here? This is a 3.0 twin turbo engine making 400 horsepower, 415 pound-feet of torque. That acceleration on here is great. Um, it doesn't like to be pushed around necessarily, but whether you're at a stop or you're in your freeway needing it to pass, it has more than enough capability to overpass anybody in your way. I don't know if I want to call it a con, but you do hear the engine noise quite a bit while accelerating in this car. On the freeway, it's it's whisper silent outside of some of the road noise you might sometimes hear from the 22-inch wheels. But around town, especially under acceleration, it does have that uh, 
V6 growl in here. So, so uh, you know, check that out while you're evaluating this car and taking it on a test drive. They also make this Aviator um, in, in a hybrid version. It adds definitely more heft, about 800 pounds more. And really what you're gaining is uh, a bit better fuel economy. If you do it on full electric mode, you get about 20 all electric miles, but that weight really adds on to the heft of the car. You can surely feel that. I like this six cylinder version right here for everyday running around. It still gets decent gas mileage, around 17 miles per gallon in the city, 23, 24 on the highway. Um, I'm sure you can pull out about a 20 mile per gallon average if you do uh, mixed use in this car. The steering feels fairly disconnected from this car. You can feel it as soon as you get in. Uh, it, it goes in the direction you point it to, but don't expect this to have track car-like capabilities. Uh, it's not meant or designed to do that. The one thing I must really point out is this one is optioned out on the 22-inch wheels. And uh, outside of the smoothest of road surfaces, you definitely feel like you can feel some of the potholes and bumps in the road, especially on uh, uneven or uh, some various road surfaces. They look absolutely fantastic, but it's something to keep in mind that they'll produce a harsher ride with slightly noisier um, uh, in-cabin perceptions here. You know, one thing I must say about this link and what it does really, really well is everything it does from all the noises it produces to how it drives what it tries to do is to kind of almost like coddle you and and make sure you're not upset at anything uh, there's no motions there's no uh sounds or anything it does that will get on your nerves it's like it's almost like they designed this whole car around the fact of, of just keeping you really cuddled in this interior and on this drive. Which again, if you're hauling an army of uh, screaming kids uh, in, in some of the seats, you probably want the car and the interior to be as serene as possible. This does that really, really well. Again, as you expect from a Lincoln, this car is probably um, 90% luxury and 10% sport. There's really nothing that sporty about it. Um, the only sport you feel from this is probably coming from the fact that it's sitting on such large wheels. Outside of that, I mean, it's completely uh, isolated from the road. Um, you almost feel disconnected from the car driving it. Uh, sometimes you get the impressions uh, that you, you are riding on it and not in it. Again, where this car shines to me is definitely interstate cruising. I mean, it just gobbles up miles like no other. You uh, you put your favorite tunes on, you turn on the massaging seats, and you can just ride and ride and ride in this car for hours without uh, without so much of uh, any sort of back pain uh, c climbing out of this. Uh, taking this on a several hour road trip, I actually got out of the car more relaxed than when I initially sat in it. And you know, that really tells you something about uh, what Lincoln, Lincoln tries to do. Um, especially in an era when all these manufacturers are trying to incorporate like more and more sport, more and more engagement into this car, Lincoln really found or you know is selling this to a customer base that, that just still appreciates luxury. Luxury, a soft and supple ride, and just the perception of a e easy going car that's uh, fairly easy to drive and won't upset you in almost any single way. All right, we've reached my favorite part of this review. We're gonna go through three likes and three dislikes. My top three likes, number one, it's gotta be the looks. I mean, this thing just looks badass from almost any angle. There's not a single design element that looks out of place or unthought about. It looks menacing. You really feel like a true mob boss driving this car, especially in old black. Number two like, I like the way this car drives. Uh, it's not as engaging as some of the other smaller or German SUVs, but that's exactly the point. You can kind of just hop in here, zone out, especially if you're doing a lot of freeway driving. Uh, it gobbles up the miles like no other car that I've driven. 
And number three, like, I like what Lincoln has done with this interior. It makes everything very accessible, very easy to use. There's no fumbling. There's physical buttons for things you need most while still having a nice large touch screen here that gives you access and functionality to everything you need in this car. They didn't fix what didn't, that wasn't broken in, in the first place. So awesome, awesome job uh, to Lincoln for, for kind of thinking through all of these nooks and crannies of this. All right, moving on to the three dislikes. Number one is the engine noise that this car makes. I think it's unnecessarily, it's a, a little bit over intrusive and you hear it quite a bit when you're kind of puttering about, about town. So they really didn't need to, um, you know, make sure it's so audible in here. Number two dislike, it's the fact that the middle row here uh, leaves quite a bit of room between where the seat ends and where the door begins. They did that to give you easier access to the third row, but I, I wish the seat would extend out uh, just slightly further closer to the door. And number three dislike, it's the, is the lack of engagement. Um, this car, again, it, you're, you're fairly disconnected from the road. It just kind of, it, it floats along. This is not an overly uh, fun car to be driving, but it's, it's, a, it's a great, great tool for day-to-day, uh, -day, especially family duties. So that wraps up our likes and dislikes. Some final closing thoughts. This is an awesome, family cruiser. It gives you the space you need to haul all your gear. This is fantastic on road trips. There's really not too many cons that I came up with this. All the materials, Lincoln did a phenomenal job designing this. So my uh, takeaways is I'm very impressed with what Lincoln did with this car, especially keeping a great and supple and very comfortable ride in here. So if you enjoy this review, check out some of our other ones. Make sure to like, subscribe and follow us for more content. We'll see you next time on the desert road.